Hi there YouTube, welcome to our new flip car that we just picked up. So bid on this yesterday, it's just arrived on a transporter, uh, bid on it blind. 2012 Chrysler Delta, which is basically an Alfa Romeo Giulietta underneath. Just shares a lot of parts, whether the car is 1.6 diesel, it's an SE. So as I said, I picked this up yesterday from Salvage Market. 2012 1.6 diesel with 72,000 miles on it and this is a category N accent I'll show you the damage so what we've got is smashed rear window dented rear bumper the rear boot bumper's gone and we've got a ding in the corner here so this is cat N because it hasn't done anything structurally wise on it I was hoping it'd just be bolt a bumper and a new boot on, but there is going to be a little bit of work needed here. I've had a go at starting to sort of bang it out and see how far it comes. It needs to come out another half inch or so. So we'll be getting a spot weld puller on that in a bit and seeing how we can get on with that. So as I said, it was listed as a run and drive. So we're going to bung the keys in and see how she sounds. Now, first thing with this, other than the damage, is that it is, you can't quite see in this light, a bit mouldy inside, so it's obviously been sitting for a while, but absolute result I found with this one is that it came with the books, which they don't often, and we have a fully stamped up service history on this one. Uh, there you go, 73,000 miles stamped up book which is an absolute bonus you don't often get that with these so in terms of how she runs no warning lights we've got aircon blowing ice cold so aircon's working nicely on it I say we've got no warning lights, 76,000 miles. So that service that we saw on it um, has only just been done. So ideal, that's a real bonus. So she seems to run sweetly. Now I did know what damage she's had in preparation. I ordered some parts. So I've got the boot lid here and I've got a bumper somewhere sitting on the MGB over there. Um, which isn't the right colour. The boot lid is the right colour, but the bumper isn't, so you're going to have to paint the bumper for it. The first thing first, I'm going to change the boot lid over so that it's watertight and I'm going to move it in and out. And then that'll also give me an idea of exactly how much further this needs to come out. Once that's done, order up, order up a clip for the bumper to fit to. And um, then we can get the bumper on, get that sprayed up, or sprayed up and then fit it. Um, see where we are. So how much do I pay for this one? This one was, I want it for £700 and with fees it came out at 8 50 um, and I paid 150 quid to have it transported to me because I don't have my own flatbed at the moment so in all in all as it stands at the moment it owes me £900. Um, I've got the boot lid cost me 200 which I thought was a good buy, included delivery so I was happy with that. And the bumper cost me 200 including delivery so i'm 400 pound in parts so 1300 pounds in at the moment i'm hoping those are the only parts i need for this and that the rest is just going to be the labor of sorting this out and painting this corner here so first things first let's get this boot lid on so got the new boot lid on what a game that was i was hoping it would be a case of undoing a plug here or underneath the headliner but as with a lot of modern cars, the loom is all in one, runs all the way through here. So I had to take all the trim off the inside of the boot, feed all the wiring back through again, disconnect it from all these bits along here. And on these, there is actually um, zip tied clips here behind the glass where you can't get to, you'd break the glass if you tried to get to it. So they must, this wiring must be put in before they actually bond the glass in which is an absolute nightmare. Um, so I actually had to snip 
snip the wire either side and leave the old section in there before putting the new in. You also have to um, take off the top spoiler um, to get to the bolts inside of the, to get to the fittings inside that for the rear brake light and the washer. So you have to um, take that off as well. It's three bolts along here. So what a game! Should have been a five minute job, but took a lot longer than that. I've obviously uh, reason is water on the screen. I've tested that the jets are, uh, are coming out with water and that the brake lights working before I put the trim back on again because I wouldn't want to take it all off again. Advantage of having two is that um, where clips have broken off I can steal them off the other ones and put them on because I'm lucky that the boot came with all the interior trim as well so what I've got to do get all this trim back in again with the boot closed now though it allows me to see how much more I need to pull out this corner so there we go so you can see on this side the body line is flush and comes out with a little kick at the end this side your body line comes down and uh, we need to pull in this direction a bit to give ourselves a panel gap and out. So we're about, what's that, half an inch or so that we need to come out with. So we'll basically take all the paint off here, get the spot weld puller up, pull that out. Shouldn't be too bad. I think I'm going to have to get another one of these, unfortunately. I can't imagine there's many of those about for these. It's probably main dealer thing. But I'll check when I put the bumper on to see if it sits straight with that still broken because I can just do a bit of plastic welding if necessary. Definitely going to have to get a clip for underneath here. I've got a feeling that is going to be a pig to get hold of. But we will see. So, um, like I say, at least it's watertight now with the new glass in the back. So I want to get on put the rest of the trim back again. Now it's time to start tackling this section here. I'm going to get the paint off of here so I can start using the welder puller onto that and bring that out. So let's crack on. So we pulled all the metal out as far as we could. Has needed a little bit of filler on the edge here to get the panel gap right. You can see I've marked here. Now I've fitted the new clips for the bumper. Um, the old clips were broken, the mounting points. Put all new mounting uh, clips on for that so I can make sure where I am with the body line and you can see here at the moment I need to take a little bit off the bottom edge here just to match this gap here and I'm a little bit and going a little bit further but I'm a little bit too low here the metalwork didn't come out quite far enough there so I need a few mil of filler just to take this edge around and then it kind of curves backwards on itself so now that I've got the bumper, I'm going to do that little bit of edge there so I can fit the bumper up tight. Then I'll put a lot of tape over the edge of the bumper here so that I can then fill to the tape. Make sure I get it exactly right but without getting filler on the bumper there. I think we're pretty much there. We've just got a little bit of fettering of the edge here now to make sure that we get that similar to the other side here. So just a little bit of fettling there and I think we're okay to put a little skim of uh, glaze over and then get some primer on. So we've got the final shaping done, we've got some filler primer on there now. So I can see a few pinholes I'm gonna have to deal with. Uh, I'll get onto that in a bit. It might be that the filler primer actually does cover some of those up. But the line coming down here looks okay to me. Looks like it's all good there. So I'm gonna give it another sand up the filler primer anyway to get any scarring on even this out of it. So we'll get a couple more coats of filler primer on it. Um, we'll follow it up with a white primer and then probably a guide coat to sand it down and see where we are. So we're all filler primered now, ready for a bit of color. So we got on about four or four or five coats, two dust coats and then three heavier coats of the white on there. And we've used some fade out thinners from about here down. So it will need obviously machine polishing down afterwards to flat it back and it's going to be a bit brighter white than the rest of the car right now it should darken down a bit overnight I would have thought but from a rattle can not too bad obviously kept the rattle cans in hot water so they flow better so a couple of dust coats to key it up and then three heavier coats with the can nice and hot and then some fade out thinners from here. If you haven't used their fade out thinners before, I highly recommend them. They help blend the new paint into the old paint, give a smoother finish. 
and get it in rattle cans easy enough. So we'll let that harden off now and then we'll give it a machine polish and see how it matches in with the rest of the car. But the lines initially seem good. We've got that line down there going okay. And then back here and only a couple of little bits of crud in the paint. Firstly, apologies for wind noise. I've had to go onto my mobile phone because my battery's run out on my GoPro, but the Delta is finished. And as you can see, she looks absolutely fantastic. She's had a good old polish and that rear repair has been completed. So we put on that second hand bumper, matching color, put on the second hand boot lid, matching color. Did that small repair here in the corner, which can't be seen, blends in nicely. Got new bumper clips, so the bumper sits nicely on there. Absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased with the finish on that. I've probably got two days in this, I think. If I count up all the fiddling around and cleaning the interior, the cleaning the interior was a bit mouldy from where that rear glass had broken. It let the interior get mouldy, but now with a good clean, actually it's come up absolutely immaculate. I was lucky with this car, I got it from Copart with the full service history as well, with the books, which was a, a big bonus. Sorry, Salvage Market, I got this one from Salvage Market. Now I've taken the family out in this to give it a test drive, make sure it's all good. And I have to say, I am hugely impressed with these. That 1.6 diesel has got loads and loads of poke. But it returns fantastic economy, more than anything. It's the rear leg room in this thing. It's amazing. My daughter absolutely loved it. She was so impressed with her leg room because also it has these features, which I was unaware of. So if I hit this button here, seat folds down. So you get a 25 degree recline, which we'll do on the other side as well. But then hit this, pull this lever here, and it also slides forwards. So she was laid back, super relaxed in the back and absolutely fell in love with this car, as did my wife when she drove it. She said she loved the idea of driving something a little bit different on a school run that other people hadn't seen. And it was just how smooth this is. It's super smooth, loads of power delivery, fantastic economy, five star end cap rating these are as well. So safety wise, you're really good as well. Still got a huge boot, even with those seats that recline and so forth. So super impressed with this. Definitely dares to be a little bit different to have a look at some of these cars. And I think it's a fantastic looking car. So all in as it stands now, I've put a new MOT in it, went straight for its MOT, only needed an exhaust bracket um, and a bulb. That's all it needed, brand new MOT on it. I'm gonna ask 2995 for this, I think, with that new MOT, but I've got 1500 pound in it. You know, I think I'll come down to about two and a half. I don't think it's going to be two and a half for this. The amount of spec you're getting here. I mean, this car, you, it's like a two-year-old car in terms of how clean it is. It really is ultra clean. Like I say, I've driven it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a faultless drive on it. As a family car for sort of two and a half grand, I just don't see how you can beat this on a 2012 with 76,000 miles. What would an Audi cost you with a similar spec? It's got cruise control, air conditioning, Bluetooth, auxiliary inputs, it's got those reclining seats, it's got your alloys, it's got your fog lights, it's totally loaded. I think you'd be looking at five grand plus, six grand. Before anybody jumps in and says about Alpha, Fiat, reliability, cries, those Audis, look, look where they are on the JD Power surveys, they're at the bottom. They're at the bottom. So definitely going to look out for more of these. I've been super impressed with this. They're going to allow a customer to have fantastic value for money fantastic family car something i can really get behind and just obviously it being a bit different they're just going that bit cheaper in the old auction so i'm really happy with this. so let's see how we get on i shall let you know see if it sells let you know what it sells for and uh, update you on that later on but overall i think for a couple of days work it's been a good buy that thanks for watching hit that subscribe button if you want to find out how much we do sell it for and for the other projects like the Fiat Coupe, Lancia Thesis, um, what else have I got on the go? The MGB Sebring, um, we've got some Fiat 500s on the go coming in as well and I'm online looking to buy more stuff right now so if you want to see how I get on with these flips hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers!